same. So up next, we have Chris Oliver. Yeah. He shares his wisdom and outlook on life using spoken word and has performed around the UK. His insights are thought provoking and heartfelt, drawing on his personal experiences growing up in Nottingham. Come on, Chris, let's have you. Yes, good evening, people. So yeah, we've had a couple of tributes to the mothers, so I'm just going to continue on that theme and jump straight into my first piece. This is called Keeping It Simple. When I look around me, I see so many farmers on their grind. I see them putting in time like they're seasoning food. And I don't mean to sound rude, but I get confused. I get the blues. I'm sending out boots to those absent farmers. You know, the ones who'd rather be chasing skirts than putting in work to nurture the seeds that they plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they've got the blessing of life that they take it for granted. Yeah. It's like they've been implanted with a false sense of their own identity. And I told you for certain that's not how it's meant to be. If you're open to reason, we'll get there eventually. Because I'm essentially just painting a picture with words. Like how nature paints a picture in the sky with the birds. I am a mother's son. So when I shine brightly, I project the sun's rays my mum's way. My mum had me beaming. And I saw as she battled with numerous demons. And even though her heart was bleeding when Pops was cheating, she never stopped believing. She stayed up late while we were sleeping at a by herself meeting so she could pray to the most side for healing. She could hold down her beating and still maintain the washing, cooking and cleaning. Have everything in the yard all sparkle and gleaming. And although her eyes were often streaming, she tried to hide the tears from her eyes to protect our feelings. So the first point I'm making is, if she's still around and value your mother, swing by tomorrow and tell her you love her, it's that simple. And the next point I'm making is this, if you didn't have a mother, you wouldn't exist. So that alone should make you know that a mother is priceless. So my question is, should a female that you have a child with be priceless? Subjected to levels of high stress, I mean, let's keep it real. She should never be above your mother because although she could be your friend, your lover, or even your wife, she never gave you life. But yet the life force that was formulated when you exchanged those, joy those sacred energies created joyful memories in the throes of passion or maybe just lost a meaning of action. I don't know, I weren't there. But the children involved take care of them. And even if you go your separate ways, cast your mind to a time or call back in the days when you were young. And treat her how you would have wanted someone to treat your mom. So the fruits of your seeds could grow with strong roots and strong foundations. And stay standing firm for any trials and tribulations. Show guidance and patience and instill them with the knowledge of the ancients and fulfill your role. Help to voice the men before they come to the end of the road. Help girls become women who instinctively know how to spot a genuine, consistent man in real time. Anything less is a real crime. Real men come forth with a real spine or fall back. Step up to the plate or fall flat and face that drama. Accept your karma and burn in hot lava. Hey. Or just do your best and be a good father. Yeah. <laughs> to Joe Digger. So, yeah. listen, when I first started writing, I was a nervous wreck, scared to get on the stage. And, and, and Jar said, come, brought me to my first open mic at an event called Black Drop. Came and supported, man. And it's been a journey since then. So, yo, big up, Jar. Big up, everyone. 
Big up the place, up the M's family, all the other performers who've been on before me. One love. So my next piece, this is called The Rest of My History. It's a very personal piece. It's, it's, about, it's about growth, personal growth. So I'm just going to jump straight in. Shards of hope dance around my deepest desires. The fire within my belly compels me to reach out and welcome them into my grasp. My heart beats so fast, my past continues to haunt me. The future continues to daunt me and the weakness of my flesh allows me to bleed with ease and so I freeze. Afraid to just be in that moment. Aware that my real opponent lies within the confines of my own skin. Telling lies to my mind's eye, making martyrs out of molehills and mowing down my dreams like roadkill. I hold still. My pen transfers the pain onto paper. The words seem harsh like Henny no chase, I better pace myself in a bait top shelf. I need to cleanse myself from my mental health and place myself in a space which allows me to go back to basics and stay rich on the premise that health is wealth. The realization is like a weight lifted, but my soul is still twisted, this is just the beginning. My head's still spinning, but I know that I'm winning and I, I feel blessed. Because I avoided that coughing, now I'm coughing some shit up off my chest, how ironic. Now I feel bionic like the million dollar man. Post my words up on the ground, but I care less if people like it. It's great if they do, but that's not why I write it. Mm. It's like this is the only way I can release and let go. Finding a peace when I let flow, which I know from the get go. But I am the sum of my life experience. There's only one me and my seeds and my variants, and so the cycle of my bloodline continues through the ages. And the pain still flows through my pen onto pages. But it no longer cripples me. And my little me's well, they get to see a different me. And I get to rewrite the rest of my history. <laughs> Like a lot of my pieces are quite deep and personal. Now and again, I like to try and write something a little more lighthearted. So this one's called Dancing to Her Destiny. I was destined to dance into her destiny. I had to slow waltz at first while this life of my intestine. Now my heart is in her custody. She's Cardiac arrested me, the rest of me just follows like a group of those celebrities, but as we salsa into ecstasy, tango with my jealousy. And she tries to express to me this loyal she would never be. And she says, if I move more backwards, she might never see the best of me. And she's right, of course. I'm right, of course. So instead of rewinding my mind, I slow wind with her. We swing by the home bar and disco crazy. Ask the bartender to pass a doble. Actually, make that a triple. She makes me feel alive, no jive, and I feel inclined to floss. She got me feeling like a boss, and over and over again, her moves never cease to amaze me. Maybe it sounds just a little bit wavy. <laughs> but I could be her Patrick Swayze and she could be her. to the way she twists. We break dance for a moment so we can share a kiss. <clears throat> My head spins, but I'm not running, man. <laughs> and even though it's loaded, girl, that's not a bunny hat. <laughs> this mama loves mambo and I don't want to let go. She's so foxtrot, indigo, November echo. Oh. <laughs> 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 
alternate provision main next time. So, I work with them young people who no one else don't want to work with. And I see a lot of um, a lot of successes but I see a lot of sad stories as well. So my next two pieces. This first one's called um, Hot Block. Yes. I see a lot of youngsters trying to fit into a box like hopscotch. It's like they're trying to keep the block hot like hot scotch bonnet in a Dutch pot. I mean, do they even know what's what? What's good for the soul and what's not? Well, it's not darks, it's not flake, and it's not rocks. It's not rambos, it's not burners, and it's not ox. Because why is it only road life that seems to get props? Why not open up a clothes shop or maybe learn how to trade stocks? Pay mind to where the book stops because book shots don't discriminate. So youngsters, don't just imitate man them on the road. Formulate your own code. Live like a free man and value life because I'm sure shanks won't offer you redemption. <laughs> More likely death or a prison sentence. And the truth is if you're deep in, this life can things a joke. Because how are you thinking violence when you're thinking who to poke? <laughs> so utilize those youthful eyes and euthanize the brutal lies. Make mistakes, learn and grow. Ebb and flow like H2O. Well, I know what you know. Deep down, choose life, sleep sound. Do your best, be proud. You need help? Reach out. We've got you. <laughs> So I think we're all aware of um, the problem with the, the youngsters and this knife crime thing at the minute. Yeah, this, this piece I'm going to do now is called Another Sad Song. I wrote this like quite a few years ago, but I had to pull it out for poets up the end. They said they heard it from the crew. Sorry, let me start again. said they heard it through the grapevine but I was there and I could see the fear in his eyes and it did me to cry the sight of him losing his life force fading like a crimson sunset disappearing beyond the horizon I pray it never happens to my son those butterflies in my tongue because I know these streets can be so unforgiving Another sad song, two rays of light with future songs. And one is gone, forever. And what lives on is a tragedy of those unfulfilled dreams of a child with a sparkle in his eyes. And a smile that could fill the four corners of any room. Taken far too soon from the womb to the tomb in just 16 short years. 16 million drops of tears falling down faces in the various places that spark a memory of him. Things will never ever be the same, thinking who can we blame, but blaming, naming, and shaming won't take away the agony of that bleeding heart appearance feels within their chest. As you struggle to catch your breath, you wish for death to take you. At least then there could be a glimmer of hope that you might see his face again, or hear the sweet tones of his laughter in a happily ever after life. But the asking price is the ultimate sacrifice, so I guess it all depends on what you believe in, or how much you value what you believe in behind on this physical plane where the pain of a mother losing her son is becoming the norm. What is it that makes us feel we have to conform to these 
sort of stereotypes where earning strikes requires our young soldiers to target each other. How could you take the life of someone who resembles your brother? Young black child, stop seeking validation by raising your status in the hood. I'm from there too, and believe me, it's so good when you take your mind out the butter, build your life and give it structure and realize that you've been tricked, that your wings have been clipped because the powers that be do not want you to fly. No, they want you to die or get high or supply your community with poison, thinking that's the only way to make it. Well, here's my advice and I hope that you take it. Dream big. Dream big and know your potential and know your worth. Shake off this diaspora curse, I mean. What's wrong with us all making it together? Through the stormiest weather, supporting each other instead of bringing each other down. The real enemy is laughing right now when he's thinking, how is it so easy to manipulate them? To the point that they will kill their own for a mobile phone. Jeez. Or for a 20 pound drug debt or to wreck their ends. If you lived on the same block, you could have been friends. Yeah. And the one who lived, 25 years of Judge Gaby. And his emotions unraveled as they slammed down the gap. But his pride still won't let him admit that. He fucked up, and he wishes he could take it back. But some things can never be undone. There's no U-turn, so don't you burn your bridges. You don't have to be religious to know what's right from wrong. It's another sad song that's been played for so long now. You've got to be strong. And somehow find a way to sway the perspective of the youth. Open their eyes to the truth that you are kings and queens past, present, and future. So make it your goal to control your knowledge of self. Because knowledge is wealth. And as a wealth of knowledge in books, you should read them. Make the most of your freedom. So you can remember that you came from greatness and your plate was always abundant. So you can build your self-esteem and establish your team and manifest your dreams. And then maybe, just maybe, we might get to a place where we won't have to sing another sad song. So this is gonna be like my last piece for tonight. Thanks for indulging me, people. This one's called Smoke and Mirrors. There's some little reflections I was having during the um, pandemic. <laughs> In recent years, I started paying more attention to the dynamics of the society. And there's a truth within a truth and a lie within a lie. And I don't know why I didn't see it sooner. Maybe those childhood vaccines and booster jabs unbalanced the harmony within my natural pharmacy. Maybe it was karma, me, getting paid back for something I did way back. Because when you earn, you have to pay tax. I noticed that the whole construct of the world we live in is built on lies disguised by smoke and mirrors. And as I unraveled more clues, the numbers grew. And so I started to fixate like, Two, four, six, eight. This must be a mistake, but it wasn't. It was a piss take. I realised that slavery was never actually abolished. They just modernised it and hid it in plain sight, to the point that some don't even know it exists. It's that polished. They create divides and providers of entertainment to distract us. They've covered all angles like protractors. They trapped us with. Love Islands and X Factors. <laughs> they subtly feed racial tension, but what they always fail to mention is they care not for anyone outside of their exclusive circle of one percenters. Mm. They don't value lives because if they did, we'd all thrive instead of just survive on the wrong side of the classified. Mm. So now most of us are pacified and classified into stereotypes, mm. going back and forth like window wipes. 
expressing our daily gripes but never actually making changes. Too busy making change. It really is a crying shame. So tell me, what's the answer? They've even made it illegal to say you cure cancer because then there's a chance that people might wake up and smell the shit flavoured coffee. It <laughs> could probably lead to Big Pharma getting its karma. Is it silly of me to dream of being free like in 1963 when Martin Luther King spoke to the people? 58 years on and we're still not equal. It's like another bad sequel. But he had a dream and we are the people, so we need to question and ask. Like with the science of the mask, it's interesting. We breathe out carbon dioxide, which is waste and have a perfect exchange with the plants and trees who breathe in our waste and replace it with oxygen. It's not rocket science. Mm. If you don't get enough oxygen, your immune system could be compromised and therefore you could be the first to die if the virus is good. Mm. I'm just stating how I feel based on the research I've done since my rebirth. So now I meditate daily to cut down the reverb so I can get set to get set with what I deserve. Mm. I've made my point, so I'll just leave you with these words. Free birds have no borders. And the only order they follow is the law of nature, mm. which by default is the law mm -hmm. the most accurate. Yeah. <laughs>